everyone, Father Jared coming to you on this Wednesday. Hope everyone out there is having a blessed Lent. And even if you've fallen short of your Lenten promises, I have a few times that you've gotten back up, you've begun again, and persevered in trying to carry those out and even allowed those opportunities, those failures to be moments of grace in which you recognize your own need for Christ, which is really what our penance here should lead us to is our uh, overabundant and great God who is willing to help us no matter what, and that without him we can do nothing. And in that vein, you know, the last week I talked about, um, you know, the fact that you are not enough, and then also has just been listening to some different uh, podcasts, and just this realization that much of what happens or what needs to happen in our lives with Christ, and then also in our friendships, is a growing vulnerability. And you know, vulnerability is one of those scary words in our culture. We're really scared of vulnerability because, well, we live in a social media world. And so what gets likes as well, whenever we put out there all these, you know, like all these positive things, like look how great my life is, look at how amazing this is. And of course, and that kind of puts this, projects this false self uh, out into the world. And the reality that <laughs> there is disappointments in our life, that we fall short, that we're not perfect, so on and so forth, then we tend to want to hide those. And not only hide those from people on social media, I'm not saying you should get on social media and tell everybody your sins. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is with Christ, that it's important for us to learn to be vulnerable. It's important for us to admit our failings, which obviously we do in the confessional. So the confessional is one of the great and wonderful opportunities of, for vulnerability that the Lord has given us. But then also just in our prayer. Sometimes I know that things will like rise up in my heart, you know, the kind of those old pre predispositions towards certain sins or certain thoughts will come to mind about myself, about others. And then I'll try to hide that from the Lord. You know, I'll just, I won't talk about that. And it's important for us to be willing to talk about that with him in prayer. Because then it allows, because he already knows, first of all, so it's not as though we're actually hiding anything from him. So get it out there. And then also allows us to see, allows us to put it into his light, allows him to see it and allows him to work with it. You know, the Lord is not going to <laughs> is not going to pile you over in order to get to your sins. You've got to hand them over to him in order for him to deal with them. And also in the same way, vulnerability also allows you to experience the recognition that you are a beloved child of God. Allows you to experience the fact that you are beloved by him because sometimes we also hold back from vulnerability because we don't that sense of unworthiness that sense of i don't really deserve this and you don't but he still wants to love you that's the fact of the matter is whether you deserve it or not he still loves you he still wants to dote on you he still wants to hold you in his embrace and he wants to let you know that you are a beloved son or daughter of god wants to let you know that you're cared for by him and that the concerns of your life are also his concerns, that you can bring those to him and that you can develop that personal relationship, that friendship with him. And I think that's the same thing with our friendships. You know, if you want any friendship to develop, you need to go deeper. You need to be willing to be more and more vulnerable over time. Now, again, I'm not saying to talk with every single person you know in your life to be vulnerable because obviously some friends or some people are not trustworthy, whereas people who are your friends, you can trust with much information. You can trust to allow them to enter into your heart. And I think that's a really important thing for us to keep in mind, to remember, and to embrace. Because the Lord does love each of us so much. But unless we're willing to expose ourselves to Him, which is ultimately His disposition on the cross, that he, His arms wide open, you know, his stance is a total openness to the world and totally naked before, you know, before his executioners, before the people of God. That ultimately our Lord stands totally vulnerable in order to allow us to come to him, in order for, to allow us to become sons and daughters of God, friends with him, and ultimately to experience ourselves by making ourselves vulnerable, bringing our sins to him bringing all of our cares, our concerns, worries, fears, so on and so forth to him. We allow him to transform it as he transformed his own suffering on the cross. 
into our redemption, so he also transforms all those instances in our life as opportunities and encounters with him who loves us no matter what. To experience that security that our, that our Lord wants to give to us. And so those are just some brief thoughts on the rule of vulnerability in a relationship with Christ. We can go much more into about what the what vulnerability has to do in friendship, but maybe that's a future video slash, you know, whatever it is. But it can apply to our friendship with others, but primarily I'm talking about a relationship with Christ, the importance of inviting them in, having those conversations with him in prayer. Uh, with all of that, I hope each and every one of you continue to have a blessed night. You know my prayers for you, and uh, please pray for me. God bless.